Hi guys, it's Ricky, and this is Ricky Reveals. <laughs> um, so I um I only have the uh, like my own personal cards. I only have, those are the only ones I have pre shuffled, and it's because when I started the reading, I didn't think I was gonna like do it um publicly, like you know, post it on YouTube. Um, so I mean, I started, and then when the cards came out, they came out. I was like, uh, okay, um, and I just felt like. God was telling me this needs to be recorded. It's meant for a lot of people to hear the story. So we got Sagittarius. We got Larry. We got Derek. July. Daniel. Australia. Just breathe, just stop and breathe. Saturday. The money is coming. Greenland. Ohio. Matt. Blue car. Wisconsin. Linda. Finally a woman's name. I was like, what's going on here? Is it a male brothel? Which, I mean, <laughs> the next card is undercover gay, so it could be. Uh, and Capricorn. So, um, we had... Sagittarius and Capricorn, so those signs are definitely very significant, and the reading could be for a Capricorn or a Sagittarius. Um, doesn't have to be, but definitely very significant. Um, I feel like somebody has um, been in a relationship, or somebody is wanting to pursue a relationship, but they um, whatever they do for work... They travel the world, and the person that they um, want to go towards, or the um, oh my gosh, I'm so afraid it's gonna fall. Um, either the person they've dated and broke up with, like when they left them, um, they went on like a world tour, or you know, like did some vacationing around the world, and they mean that means that um, they also did a lot of. A lot of lying to this person because the person um, that was that dated them didn't think they had any money, or at least I mean, it, like no money, like that. <laughs> um, excuse me. And now this person's like, I really want to go back and get a second chance, but I don't want to explain it to them. <sighs> <sighs> how I was able to afford the overseas travel and um, why I took the overseas travel, why I was traveling in the first place. Um, so definitely hiding shit. Uh, now, if it's the other way around and you're resonating it with the, you're single and that you're about to meet somebody who um, travels the world and has some kind of, mysterious uh employment they're debating on um i don't think they're debating on whether or not to tell you i think they're gonna tell you but um they're trying to figure out how because there's just something about whatever it is they do whatever whatever it is that c causes them to do the traveling there's something about it that they're afraid you're not going to be able to handle or that you're not going to like want anything to do with them. On the second tip, like I think it's definitely very true for the first tip, like because you guys have been together um, and you've probably uh, ghosted them and stuff. So that one that, they're probably going to be able to be understanding and compassionate, but I don't think that that one, that it really might just be over. Um, because that's not the only secrets and betrayal that's happened in that relationship. And I think some people just realize no matter how much you love somebody, if they don't love you back or they don't respect you, they never will. And if, I, Well, let me rephrase it. There is a line you can... Ooh, ooh. There is a line 
that you cannot have true, genuine love with somebody and cross that line. Once you've crossed that line, you've pretty much said, I, fuck you. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't love you because there's just certain things. If you love somebody, you're not going to do. And this person has done all those things to you, probably even more than what you know about. Um, make time for self-love, Libra. Now, as far as the like secret admirer or the uh, situation where it's someone who you either just met or about to meet, um, like I said, they're definitely going to tell you, but they're probably cooling their heels a little bit on actually really getting into like dating you. Um, and they're probably, they're probably actually coming off as they're not that interested. Um, but they, they actually really are. It's just that what they have to tell you, they don't know if you're going to be able to handle it and they don't want to lose you before they even get you. Um, wow. Now you were loved Libra two Libra. So this might be a Libra's reading too. Believe in your good luck, Sagittarius. Shuffle, shuffle. And I definitely think like, um, well, I guess both situations could have honestly been like an undercover gay thing between one or both partners. Um, but I think in the, um, wow. Sorry, I'll take all those. <sighs> I think in the relationship that hasn't ever like ha come together because the, I'm going to say the masculine, but th either way, however it resonates, the one that hasn't really shown any emotions, like maybe, um, and, okay, I just heard this. Maybe you guys have known each other actually for quite some time and possibly have been like friends with benefits or whatever, but um, um, the person that's wanting to tell you all this stuff, they've never showed like any emotion. It's like, it's like, it's been just straight like, fuck, get me off. And then they leave. And they've never really ever made you think it would be anything more than that. Um, I definitely think that's an undercover gay situation. Um, I think it's probably one of the reasons why um, you never thought this person's going to tell you what they're about to tell you. Um, or would tell you what they're about to tell you. Release control, Taurus. Um, but so... That scenario might be the masculine or the the counterpart or the one in the who wants to uh, ask or offer a love offer and reveal like this huge secret about themselves. I think that one definitely is the one of the things that's held this connection from ever coming together is that they are that it is a same sex relationship and that they um have had to do a lot of soul searching in order to be able to admit that they love, they actually love and want to be with somebody of the same sex. Uh, take a breather. That is uh, cancer. They could actually be a father or like I said, if it resonates the other way, a mother, but I think children are definitely affecting the relationship. Uh, leave the past behind Capricorn. Honor your feelings, Pisces. Go wild, Leo. I think these people, like, because I, I really think the um, the connection that has never, like, it's just now, like, coming into um, the physical realm. I think they're going to make it. I, I definitely do. I think um, if, even if they don't, like, like last forever, you know, um, they're definitely going to make it for quite some time because there's something about the person who reveals the truth and the person they reveal the truth to that whatever it was that the person who was scared to tell the truth was scared to tell it, whatever it was that made them afraid to tell it, the person they told it to actually was able to 
understand and be compassionate. And um, I'm not going to say it didn't bother them at all, but they saw it from a different perspective and they were able to understand it and forgive and allow for um, love to transcend whatever it was or is that's <laughs> this secret. Practice gratitude, Sagittarius. I'm really feeling led to use the star seed oracle. Um, I said it in a video not too long ago on my other channel because <laughs> I had that channel then. Um, which another reminder, guys. Um, please, if you know me, like um, subscribe <laughs> and share my videos because I did have a lot of subscribers on that other channel. But my ex, um, the day they decided to ghost me and never speak to me again. I uh, was sleeping and they chose not only to ghost me and never speak to me again, they also chose to steal my phone. So, excuse me. Um, and I know I should have had the password memorized. I should have had it written down somewhere, but I didn't. I thought I was, I thought I had it memorized and Definitely didn't want it written down anywhere because I didn't want anybody to be able to get my info. Um, but anyways, it's just the way it turned out. So I got to start over and build this channel up like I did the last one. So please, <laughs> if you love me, like, share, and subscribe and share as much as possible to get to help me get back the subscribers I had on the other channel. Uh, here we are. So we're getting a wait. It's not yet time. Things are being woven. So I think that's a caution to, um, wait. <laughs> um, no, um, there might be some like really compelling offers or like really enticing offers that come to you. Uh, definitely explore them. Definitely explore your feelings, but don't commit wholeheartedly to anything right away because you're going to regret it if you do because either something's coming back from the past or the offer you're going to like the best is like the third offer to come in or something like that I don't know but or it could be an ex that you are willing and have always I think wondered what if we did give it a second chance um, could be coming back. So if it resonates either way like that, then definitely wait. <laughs> um, and that's not to say not to be flirtatious with these people, not to, you know, let them know you're interested, but also if you're doing that, let them know wholeheartedly why you're not taking, actually taking them up on their, their offer they've offered you. Um, so that they don't, think that they're, you're playing them or that they're, you're not interested. Um, water your garden. Nourishment, body care, tenderness, and rest. So, um, it's definitely a card of self-care. Um, so, in this time, get plenty of rest. Um, try to med meditate more and pray more like more than I mean you probably ever have just because you are going through an ascension and um things are coming to you now that you don't know um and your gifts are probably even like either you may be activating a new gift or um the gift you already have is going to actually be um elevate like you're it's going to have be more powerful and you're gonna uh, have to adjust to it being expanded and heightened. Um, so there's going to be certain things like that maybe you used to do before that now you won't be able to use that avenue to like tap into your gift or um, to be able to use your gift. So then now you can't rely on something else. You've got to rely directly on God and the gift. Um, so however that resonates for you don't be hard on yourself like this is definitely it's with any um curriculum you know what i mean any um 
aspect of life, you know, any, uh, or education on any subject. I mean, there's certain things like that you really just have to study and you have to put in the effort and the work in order to actually, um, to get the lesson or, um, to pass the test in order to be able to have, well, in this, like in this case, the gift, um, because if you don't put in the work, you're not going to fully um, unravel the uh, potential of the elevated gift. Because I, I'm not saying like God will take it away from you or anything, but you will not be able, you won't be able to use it as heightened as you would have if you would have done what God asked you to do. Star family. You're part of a team of souls call in support. So, um, there's other people around you, um, that have the same gift as you, whether you realize it or not. And I think they've already gone through this level up that you're going through. So, um, spirit is encouraging you to, to reach out. They can help you. Um, they might not be able to give you the answers, but they could definitely um, lead you in the right direction to where you can figure the answers out. Because they're going to remember how it was for them when they went through it. One more of these and I'll move on to a different deck. Well and Orca Elders. Share your song, frequency of sound, deep, diving deep. Um, I pulled that card several times when I use this deck. And I don't really quite understand what diving deep means. Um, I think it means going inside, like getting to the root of all your problems, like getting to the root of your soul, maybe your root chakra. Um, but... Share your song, frequency of sound. Um, your testimony. I think it's exactly what it means. Your testimony is very powerful. Um, and it's definitely about to be even more powerful. Um, and I think that's why you've been wanting to tell it. And for certain aspects of it, you have told it. And you've told it to a very large um, amount of people. Uh but you've also been told, stop talking, like, don't actually release your full testimony yet. Um, so for those of you that feel like you w wanted to, like, tell your testimony because you were so thankful and grateful and, like, you're full of love and um, for Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, that you really wanted to do this a long time ago. But God kept telling you, no. It's not time yet. They're not ready yet to hear your testimony. And I I think that's exactly it because it, the full power of what your testimony is and what it's going to achieve for the kingdom of God and the glory of God and uh, your brothers and sisters um, who have not yet come to Christ but will because of your testimony Um It's like <laughs> strength and guidance. Um, you hadn't gone through everything that you needed to go through yet. And those points where you wanted to tell it and you kept getting told not to. Um, because what's about to happen or what's just happened in your life is, I mean, like, it's going to go, you're going to go from like a power of like three to a power of 300. And just this one like chapter um, with your testimony. So if you would have like told your testimony before now, you would have lost like 300% value to what the testimony is meant to be for others. And I mean, and yourself. Holy spirit, holy angels, please give me some more cards to add some truth and clarity to this reading. Um, I definitely do think I'm talking to an earth angel, star seed, or chosen one. Divine timing is at play and cut the cords. So, um, 
like God's very patient and he loves you very much. And he knows how difficult your life has been. And he knows how difficult some of the um, things that you have to give up or you have to change your perception on or mod moderate in order to level up. He knows it's not easy and he knows that you're doing your best. So do not, do not get hard on yourself, but, um, Um, really, <laughs> please <laughs> give me the words back. Totally lost them. Um, but, um, so he is being very patient with you and doesn't want you to like, feel like you're running out of time. And, like you got to do this now, because if you like, let that fear work over love, you are going to. Basically, um, mess up your testimony or like the proper delivery of it when, um, you release it because you're going to get so excited about doing it that you're going to rush it or, I mean, like, and it's probably even like in your speech or, um, your delivery of it. You'll either leave things out, you'll uh, tell things in the wrong order, or um, you'll just, it won't be as gracefully broken as it needs to be. And that's what God is like trying to tell you. This, he didn't put you through this. He didn't put your, uh, the, everyone else that's gone, been a part of your story. This did not happen for no reason. It was very divinely orchestrated because he loves you and he loves his other, ch all of the children in the world. And for some reason, he has chosen you to be a light to a very powerful number of people. I mean, I'm millions, millions of people will actually, their whole life will be changed just because they heard your story. And it's crazy because like, um, I just get this like intense feeling that your entire life, people have tried to make you feel invisible. People try to make you feel like that you weren't valuable. Um, even probably like family members and stuff that were Christian always from like a, a very young age for you always made you feel like you weren't good enough to be Christian. Um, that Jesus would never love you for whatever reason. And, um, this, I'm just gonna give this example because it's one of the things I've dealt with. Um, okay. So I, and it's actually a new thing in like society too. Children do not know sexuality until sexuality is taught to them till it's been thrust upon them. So, um, or until they actually get lucky and they get to keep their innocence and they actually get into their teenage years and the hormones start to like, Hey, what, what's going on here? <laughs> um, but so when people are molested, they, I, especially at a very young age, it, th there's like the trauma is just I, unbelievable. That's why a lot of people never, ever heal. I mean, it may have happened, you know, at four, five, six years old, and literally they're they drink themselves to death at sixty because they never, they never could understand why that happened to them, and you know what I mean. So it's a very, and it happens way more often, like than people think, and it's even getting worse. So like, we really need to protect our children. For like, I just wanted to throw that out there, but and if you're a parent of a child who has been molested. Um, and you, I, it's not your fault. You know what I mean? Like you just, whatever reason circumstances were aligned together to where there was nothing you could do to stop it. Like you didn't know about it until after it was already done and over with. Um, do everything you can to help that child realize that that is not love that that person that did it to them does not love them and that it, and also it's not their fault and that God loves them and that, um, their life will not be defined by what has happened to them in that moment. Um, because if you don't, 
and you try to sweep it under the rug, which was kind of like what happened to me, or um, your parents act like they don't believe you or a- any of that. Um, because mine was actually happened within the family. So my family, that doesn't happen in our family. Um, that happened to me. And that's what, so basically I got felt at like eight years old. I was told that you're lying. That doesn't happen in our family. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, stop being a drama queen. So that was <laughs> the way I was treated after that trauma. And I literally, and I will, for one, it caused me to allow myself to be victimized again a couple years later. Um, so definitely do not try to conceal what has been done for the sake of family. If it is so happens to be that your case is a family situation as well. Um, because that will really, I I've been through, um, a lot of drugs and alcohol and like sexual promiscuity and stuff because every time I got into, well, actually my first, like the one I thought was going to be my, my husband, um, like the person I spent the rest of my life with, I did spend nine years with them, but (laughs) they were just like the men who did that to me when I was a child. I, it really twisted my head up that I went through all that as a kid and then I grew up and fell in love with the same kind of person that did that to me as a kid. I, that So that added more trauma to my already existing drama. Um, and I think at the end of that relationship, like I kind of just got this like, fuck it. Um, I, I've done everything I can to be a good person, to, you know, use my gifts and go out there and follow my dreams. And, you know, I've just done everything I can to like be a good person, but apparently I'm just not worthy of love. Um, I'm just like the sexual object for men who don't know how to take no's for an answer. Um, and I turned to hard drugs and I mean, I went down the rabbit hole. I flew on the magic carpet. Like, um, it took a lot of years of my life and I'm not proud of it, but I'm also not, uh, I don't regret it because there's a lot of people I know and a lot of things I've been through that really helped me out of the time. And now I can use those experiences and those people or those people's stories anyways. Um, cause like most of the things I'm talking about now are people that are no longer in my life. Um, but I can use the stories in order to help others and inspire others. So I'm very grateful to have that as part of my testimony. Uh, and as I was saying, like, don't get too excited to tell your testimony. I'm going to stop with my, with my part of it. Um, just cause I, I, I feel like I need to do a specific video for my testimony. Um, so ask and receive everything you've ever asked for that you felt like, you know, like I was just saying, um, that you just, whatever reason you were born to suffer, like you didn't deserve any happiness, any love, because for whatever reason, you're just like this imposter who doesn't deserve shit because from a very young age your family your friends at school your teachers or whatever they all like whether they did it on purpose or not they like formed this disassociated uh view of self inside of you and it just got the more trauma that built up on you the stronger that like disassociation of your true character became inside of you um And so throughout your life, you know, you believed you've had faith, you believe in God, you've prayed, you know, and you believe that, you know, if I ask God for this, I will get it. Um, and you just never did. (laughs) I mean, you just like, it seemed like it's the universe, God, the people around you just kept shitting on you, shitting on you, shitting on you. Well, I'm telling you right now, be grateful, count it all joy, everything you've ever asked for in your life that you didn't get, because for one parts of it is because the things we're asking for you didn't want and you didn't know you didn't want them and god knew you that it was not going to be okay for you so he um he blocked those things that you were asking for but i'm telling you right now this season this chapter that you were in everything you've ever wanted in your life you're about to get everything intuition and downloads and i believe if you're resonating with the 